All right. Okay, let's get started. So, um, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Simon. Uh, I'm the COO and uh, co-founder of uh, Fun Kernel, and welcome to the first session of the FinTech Association of Hong Kong and Fun Kernel No Code Education. Um, the purpose of me of us collaborating and creating this course is so that um, more people can understand no code. Um, it is a very much a up and coming uh, development tools. And um, what I've uncovered is that it's not very prevalent in Asia. Um, there are quite a few people who have used no code platform and no code solution to develop their application. But at the same time in Asia, specifically around Hong Kong, not a lot of people are very um, well versed into this. So I figured that I wanted to sort of build this up. Now, this is going to be a four session um, course. And what we're trying to do here is we're looking to build a CRM right in front of you guys. So it's going to be something that be you know a bit more practical. And it's not going to be something so theoretical. I'm going to build out an entire uh, CRM system right in front of you to show how easy it is to actually use no code platform to build out solution. And for those of you who are either entrepreneur looking for a new startup, looking to execute on your ideas, or if you are working within a financial institution looking for a new project to initiate, the tools like this uh, is tremendously helpful. And I'm hoping that this course will shed some light on how tools like no code can actually help you achieve what you're looking to do, both as a startup or as, a, uh, as an established uh, financial institution. So let me sort of break down myself. So like I said, I am um, the co-founder and CEO of Fun Kernel Limited. Um, Fun Kernel, we are a digital alternative investment platform. Uh, we were founded in 2021, and we've been uh, operating, uh, our, our platform has launched since 2022. Uh, we currently have around $60 million of AUM, and the entire platform was built by myself using a no-code tool. So that's something, and, and, and that's um, pretty you know, pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Um, I'm also a principal of a um, development company called FinTech in Motion. Uh, we specialize in uh, custom in bespoke FinTech solution, mobile apps, front end, uh, different various things. Uh, again, uh, our core competency is around using no code platform for faster time to market, better execution, and, and, and various things. So if any of you have um, any initiative or project that would see that need you know our services help you to uh, help you to uh, to oblige. Um, I myself have been in the fintech space in 2010, um, specifically around capital markets, asset and wealth management. Um, I have a particular understanding of implementing products around uh, structured products, um, uh, front end our CRM tools, trading oper uh, order management pool tools obviously fund management tools as well. So, um, and, but I've been a no-code developer since 2018. Um, for those of you who are interested, that QR code goes to my uh, LinkedIn. If you guys wanted to add me on LinkedIn, feel free to do so and happy to uh, have any conversation offline. So let me, before we get started into building anything, let's first very quickly talk about what is no code, right? So I, I think one thing that we have to be clear on is that no code is pretty much a very mis is a misnomer word. I mean, no code is not actually no code. There is code behind it. Uh, it's just that it, no code really is we're using visual elements instead of programming language to develop our applications. So in reality, you could actually call no code as virtual application development platforms or, or, or virtual application um, development tools. Um, something to sort of similar to what no code is, is what's like, was, it's what when, for those of us who are old enough to know Windows, 90, Windows 93 is really a no code tool for MS-DOS way back in the day. Uh, WordPress is a no-code tool for website building, and obviously everybody should know Shopify 
is really a no code tool for online shop. Uh, now those are very specific use cases. And now there are many no code tools that would enable you to build an entire application. Uh, there are many no code tools apps today, uh, Webflow, Bravo, Bubble, uh, MarkerPad, Airtable, Coda. Um, each of them has their own unique capabilities and each of them has their own unique offering. Uh, some of them very focus on mobile app development. Some of them are actually focused on backend development. So for example, Airtable is a no code tool for backend database development. Um, uh, and uh, Webflow, Webflow is very much focused on the on on the on the on the front end mobile app. Um, now the application that I'm using is, oh sorry, I think I'm not sharing. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so sorry I didn't forgot I put the screen on sc uh, screen on pause. Um, yeah, so so. You, the list of no-code tools today is like Webflow. Like I said, most of these have different applications, different specifics, um, uh, benefits, and specific uh, 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 value add. Um, now, the application that I'll be using that I have been using is Bubble, which is a um, which is a complete front-to-back no-code development platform. Um, a quick disclaimer: I'm not. You know, I'm not being paid by Bubble. I don't work for them. Uh, it's just that I'm very familiar with this platform. I've built the entire Fun Kernel platform using this, um, and it's what I'm comfortable with, and it's what I would like to introduce to you guys today. Um, there is a lot now. Bubble does offer a front to back um, element, so it's fully integrated with front end, middle, and back. It's actually part of the, it actually leverages the uh, infrastructure for AWS for hosting and database uh, encryption. So a subscription to Bubble allows you to have basically the entire thing to run the application. Now, some of the key aspect of Bubble includes, it has a drag and drop design editor. It has an extremely powerful workflow engine that really helps you understand and develop the functionality within your app. Um, because it is integrated with AWS, it has a built-in encrypted database. It is secure uh, and scalable hosting. Um, now, two very important aspects that I think is very unique for Bubble is that it has a very powerful API connectivity and integration option. You could pretty much integrate anything using their API connectors. And in this course, I'll be showing you how to use the API connector to connect certain things. Now, for those of you who have a financial institution that have an existing system, um, you can certainly leverage the API connector to extract data from your existing platform, existing um, system as well. And it has a massive third-party support marketplace. There's a lot of pre-built marketplace tools, many of them are free, that you can leverage to help build things out much quicker. There is a very, very big community of Bubble users and Bubble developers that has built certain component that you can reuse as plugin or as design uh, template that you can use. And, and that's some, and these two are, are really unique to Bubble and you'll find that it'll save you guys a lot of time. But having said that, I'm not saying that you have to use Bubble. I would suggest you try all of these different tools. If you're really keen on understanding bubble, understanding the no code space, um, really get your hands on a lot on all the all of these tools. Many of these tools offer um, freemium service, which allows you to sort of go in and try things out. So definitely, definitely go in and and, and check them out when you have time. So, like I said. Um, in this course, this four session course, we're going to build a CRM um, using Bubble. Um, it's going to be specifically for, uh, we're going to build a CRM for a hypothetical wealth management firm. And here are some of the features that we'll be looking to implement. Um, you could create a new prospect. Um, you could create a new product within the CRM. Uh, we're going to build an onboarding, a KYC onboarding workflow that turns a prospect into a client for an account opening. 
using the CRM tool. And we're going to build functionality that can create a call and activity report. Uh, depending on how much time we have, we'll look to do different things and we'll look to uh, maybe add a few things into the mix. So hopefully by the end of the four, uh, by the end of the four, uh, four hour course over the next few, over the next few months, um, we'll have a functional CRM right in front of you guys. Now, typically, if we do this consecutively, we can build a CRM at an extremely fast pace. Um, we could replicate, if you go online, just go on YouTube, there are many YouTube tutorial videos that shows you how you can use Bubble or other no-code tool to clone certain other functions or, or other services. So you could clone an entire Salesforce in two weeks, or you could clone an entire Slack application using Bubble in three hours. So these are the tutorials that you can certainly follow as well to kind of get your hands on on how NoCo can very quickly able to build an app and now allow you to launch an app at a very fast pace. Um, and also the other good thing about NoCode is that you can actually make changes very, very quickly. So with that said, I think we can get started. And let me just quickly show you guys what we're gonna be go doing. Um, and hopefully we'll get the most out of this. Uh, most out of this course. Now, if any of you have any questions about what I'm doing or any of these, uh, or, or you know, if you want to learn more, feel free to um, enter your message in the chat, and I will try to answer them at the end uh, at the end of the hour. Okay. So on the agenda, we have done the introduction to the course. We have done introduction to no code and bubble. And we're now at this point where database and data attribute. But let me just go into the bubble. Uh, website first, so kind of let you see. So bubble, the bubble website is double.io. And um, let's see if I go into the home page and see if we, oh, okay, because I'm logged in, so it already put me in there. So right now you're seeing the bubble uh, dashboard app. This is where I sort of built things out with different application. And this is where I have my CRM test. So I'm going to open up this app. This is what I'm going to be, what I'll be using for this example. And here we have what we call the editor. Okay, so this is where your page and your app will start to uh, get edited. Now on the left hand side, you have various options. You have design, you have workflow, data, styles, plugins, settings and log. So I'm just going to go into data for now because I like to talk about the database. Now, from, our, from like I said, Bubble is a fully front, middle, and back integrated platform. So it does host your data within the apps as well. And at the end of the day, apps is really just a function of take input and generating output and storing everything into the database. So setting up the database is extremely important. Now, Bubble have that space for you. You can set everything up for you right on this platform. And we, if we are do, building a CRM, let's see what we need for our, I'm gonna show you what we need into our data. So I have a Figma here that sort of outline what kind of database we need for this application. And I'm gonna see if I can uh, make this a little bit bigger for you. If not, then, uh, Okay, let me see if I can zoom to 100. Okay, so let's see what uh, what type of data do we need to build our CRM, okay? So first we obviously have our users and in Bubble, the user data table is a native. So every application will have a user. This is the user which will log into the application. And if I go back to the application here, if I go to the database, you can see the data, the user data table is already there. There are certain defaults that Bubble has set up. So for example, email, which is a text, is default. Modified date, create date, and slug is a default. These are built-in field. Now, if I go back to my Figma and take a look at what I need. So the email, yeah, um, I have, three other fields that I need in order to um, fully complete my user table. I need uh, another item called email confirmed and I need a temporary password. So 
So confirmation code, temporary password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply add that by creating a new field, okay? So field name, what is the field name? Email confirmed. So this is how I'm gonna add new data into the table, email confirmed. And here I can select different field type. So Bubble allows you to select various different field types here. So you have user, text, number, numeric ranges, date, date range, date interval, yes, no, file, image, and graphical address. Now it's very important when you design your lab, um, actually the most important aspect when designing an app is to figure out the database. Uh, we call it data architectural design because how the database structure has a very ripple impact on what the functionality is going to be like. So for example, if your, if your field is a text field, okay, if your field is a text field, which means that it's a free text application, then it may it may not be used as certain function. There may be certain limitation to the function, right? From a search standpoint, and it may be a bit challenging, or um, um, from a user's ability standpoint, you may want to use a drop down instead of a text. So all of these things are factored in. So whenever you design your database, make sure you have that in mind. Now for us, email confirm is the purpose of this data field is to say whether the user's email has been confirmed because that's pretty much the standard of making sure the email uh, being the user is uh, is active. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say yes, no, and I'm gonna create. So I now have added a field called yes, no. Now I could add a default here. Um, typically for email confirm, my default would be a no. And here I can also then add a notes, which can help me sort of identify what this is for. So I can input that this field is for indicating whether the user has been, the user's email has been confirmed. Okay, so let me just do a quick, okay. So there's my field. Now, what other field do I need? I need a confirmation code. And here I'll use a text field. And I'll also need a temporary password. And here I'll also use a text field. Now here you actually have another option, which is, is this field has a list and multiple entries. So this is where, where if this um, particular field or this particular data stores a list of things instead of just one item. So um, for temporary password, this is not going to be a list of things. This is just going to be one item, but where can we, where might we use the list of things? So for example, let's say um, if you want to add tags, right? So I could just create, I'll just give it an example here. Let's say user tags, right? And you're allowing user tags to add their own, to, to have their own tags. You can have a text field and you can click on this field has, a, uh, this field is a list with multiple entries. This will allow um, the, the database to accept multiple data within that data table, okay? Within that data field. But I'm not going to do that now, but I'll, I'm pretty sure we'll have a way to use this. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. So now I have this field done. So now I have the user field uh, ready to go. Okay. Now, beside the user, which is used for logging in the user, we also need a data table for user profile, which has all these other items, okay? Now, the user, again, the user here, we're talking about the user for the wealth management firm, the RMs and the, you know, and the, and the supervisors and all that. So let me quickly create a user profile data type here. How do we do that? We just go by new data type, and we're going to say user profile, create. And now we have created a separate table, okay? So let's quickly use it. Now, what I'm gonna do here, the first field in this user table is, you notice that in my Figma, I've associated, each user profile is associated with the user, okay? So I need to have create a linkage between this um, user and this user table and this user profile table. So what I do is the first field is I'm gonna say user, 
And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select user as it, this, the data type here should be user, okay? And create that. So this will actually link this uh, each specific record to a specific user record. Uh, if I create a new field, the other thing is user ID. And I'll use that as a text, uh, first name. Text, uh, middle name, text, last name, text, and a full name. And email and user type. Okay. Email, which is a text. <clears throat> and a user type, which is an option set. <clears throat> okay. Now, what is an option set? An option set basically is a way for you to set up options. So instead of having to type things out, you can have these options set um, can be reused over and over. And how do we set that up? So in the database table here, you can see that there is an option set, uh, option set button. Click on option set. And I'll skip the tutorial. And let's create a new option set here. We're going to call them user type. I'm going to create. And I'm going to have a few option type um, set up. So the user can be um, admin user. Okay, no, so option set, sorry, user type, new option, sorry, new option. You can have an administrator option. You can have a team lead option and you can have a um, normal user option, okay? So this becomes the list, um, user type list. So when I, am, when I am working on the data type here and the user profile, what type of user is this person? I'll simply go option set user type, create, okay? All right, we now have two data table now set up. So why don't I quickly do a example of um, creating a user? on this platform, right? Uh, now for those of you, uh, now here is, there is a place for you to sort of check out what data is already on or is already available. Um, there's an app data uh, table here. This is where all the data record has been stored, right? So right now there's no app data, all the user profile, nothing is here. So let's just, uh, and, and, and you can see once we've created data within the app, this will, uh, these will show up. So what I will do now is let me go back to the editor. So this is the editor where the drag and drop element uh, can be uh, created. Um, so I'm gonna quickly create a function where we can register a user. Now to register a user, first thing is we need to create a form and all that, but I'll show you how that's done. Um, obviously you have your bank page. And if I click on that, a double click on the blank page, you'll actually see a number of options available. So here you have your page title, my CRM 178. So let's say uh, I'll change that to wealth CRM sample. Okay, so this is my page title. Um, the title of this page is index, right? And there, if there's the mobile version, um, it's a mobile version or no mobile version. I'll leave that empty for now. Um, the other thing here is the type of content, right? The type of content basically says, what type of data, uh, what type of data table will be primarily used within this page? So we've created two data tables. So it could be either user or profile, or you could leave it empty for now. You can see that if I use either one, it actually helps you. Um, it actually helps you um, design the page a little bit quicker to know which data to draw whenever you need to um, build this page. Um, 
Now there's many things, there's like a style uh, option here. You can create your own default style. So for those of you who have a design specific look and feel to, a, uh, to an app, you can actually create that style and then reuse that style as needed. Um, or you can customize your own uh, background style and background color. Um, there's also a layout uh, tab that sort of helps you lay out the different the design. This is very much on the design aspects of it. So I'm not gonna go into too much of it. Um, conditional is something that I do wanna get into today, hopefully, uh, because it does have impact on how the app is reacting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly build out this, um, build out the, uh, the user registration function. And if I point you guys to the left-hand side, the whole concept of Bubble, we use what we call groups and elements, right? So groups and elements. So group is where you can group everything into one little nice little piece here. So if I can use group and it, it basically a drag and drop group. And I, so there I have my group A. Uh, a group A, you can, and I can have different element within that group. And it basically helps move things along. So let's say if I create a button element with the group, right? And if I minimize, if I move the group, it actually moves alongside with me, right? Now, is it necessarily to have a group? No, but it's a lot better. If, if you start thinking about the design using a group type of mindset, it actually helps things a little bit more. So let me give you an example, right? So if I go into, let's say, um, okay, I'm just going to my Fun Kernel website, shameless plug. So if I look at the Fun Kernel website, so I have here a few groups, right? So obviously I have the large group here, right? The large group for the login. And then I have a left-hand group and a right-hand group. And within the left-hand group and the right-hand group, I have different elements. So there are these login elements, there are these input elements. So by grouping things, it helps you organize your design a little bit better. So groups is what really mainly that is for. Now, once I have the groups, I can start creating the elements. Now the element there is input elements and then there are output elements. So input elements are things like the inputs. So right at the bottom here, there's input elements. So you can have input, multi-line input, check boxes, drop down, search box, radio button. These are all native within, within the Bubble application. Um, on, the, uh, on the display element, there are things like text, um, icon link. Um, there's also things called repeating group, which sort of display a list of things, which is kind of interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is let me quickly build out a form um, for the um, for the user registration. So I'll quickly just go and do, an, do a text here. And I'm just gonna call it uh, user registration. And I'm not gonna be too picky about the font, but it's just for, just for argument's sake, let's make this a little bit bigger. I can't even spell, sorry about that. User registration, okay. I'll make this bold, all right. So I have my first thing. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create another, another group within this group. So let's just gonna call it um, group. And I'm just gonna call this group um, first name input. Right, and there should be a text here that will say, uh, actually, the layout. I'll do the layout into row um, text. So, first, first name. All right. Um, now, at the bottom, there are various other things that you can sort of make things a little bit look, you know, look a little bit better. Again, now I'm not going to focus too much on the look, but uh, look and feel. I'll, I'll leave that for another course, but I'll just quickly say, click the center vertically. So now this first name, and this is the header. Now I will have an input element that will input, that will input the name, input the, the first name. So here, 
text element should be first. So we have now first name, the input element, input first name, okay? So there. Now, to make things simpler, I can also quickly just right click on this group here and do a copy and paste. So that will copy and paste both things here. And, but make sure you name the group uh, properly. Middle name. And again, middle name. Uh, I'll just say, and let me just quickly do this copy. And let me just do a few right away. All right, middle name, and just do that. Last name. Last name, and then this should be emails. And um, user type, okay? Now, remember in the user type, we use an option set as user type. We're not using text field as user type. So I'll show you how what that looks like. And because we're not gonna use be using text input for user type, okay? So quickly, I have a form here. Doesn't look all that appealing, but again, we're just demonstrating the functionality for now. Uh, if I click on preview, it will actually show you what this page looks like. Okay, so now I have things here that will allow me to sort of input different things. So Simon Wong, well, Simon say um, Wong, Simon Wong dot com. Now again, the user type. Remember, we set it as an option set, so it's not supposed to be a text. Uh, I'm not supposed to put in a thing here. So I'll need, to diff I'll need a different element for this. So instead of using a input, what I will do is I would actually use a dropdown. Now I can select, delete this or select the dropdown right from uh, the left hand menu here, or I can simply right click and replace the element type. And I'm gonna replace it with a dropdown, okay? Now, once you replace it with a dropdown, um, this window here actually changes. And dropdown basically wants you to identify what are the things that is available for the user to choose. Now, you can either manually input static choices. So choice number, choice number one, choice number two, and choice number three and so forth. And if I run the preview on this, you can see that this has become my choice, but I don't need to do that because I've already set up an option set for this. So instead of using a static choice, what I will do is use dynamic choice and the type of choice is the option set user type, okay? Uh, the choice source is uh, all user type, all of the user type, you wanna include all the user type that you have set up. Now here, this is where syntax comes into play. You'll notice that um, this is turned into blue. Um, the blue here indicate that this is okay, right? Now, if I didn't have anything before, so let me delete that. Let me clear that expression. So there is this concept of an expression here. Uh, and I quickly point you to the top here. Um, Bubble has a live real-time issue tracker. So this basically tracks if there is an issue with your app or if there's any logical fallacy in your app or some expression that is wrong in your app that may cause an error, it actually shows you what the issues have. So right now, anything that's indicated in red, there is an issue. So choice sources. So we're gonna select all user type. And once this turned to blue, you'll notice that the issue has reduced from two to one. The other issue now is option caption. So what is going, option caption essentially means what is it gonna be displayed here? Well, it's gonna display um, current options display. And it will know that, okay, all the issues has been resolved. And if I run the app now and choose an option, you'll notice that the user set, option set is now being made available uh, for the user to choose from, okay? 
Okay, so I quickly has have a have a form. Um, you know, I quickly have a form here. So what I will now need is a button to say register the user. So I can do quickly do a button here, and let's say register user. Okay. So if I maybe put this, sorry, if I put. Uh, if I put this layout on the right hand side and uh, maybe add a little bit of margin on top just to kind of make things looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, let's do a 50 margin. Okay. So this is a button. Uh, I'll add a little bit of roundness to it. Uh, just 10. Okay. So now I have my form and I have my register user. Now, what we need to do now to create a user is to create what we called a workflow. And a workflow essentially are the steps that the app needs to take in order to achieve certain outcome. And in this case, registering a user. How do we create register a user? I will right click on this and I can start an edit workflow, okay? And it brings me to the work workflow page. Um, uh, of this app. And this is where you can start defining the workflow in a step-by-step -step basis. From my perspective, in my opinion, how Bubble actually do the um, workflow, it's extremely, extremely easy for someone who doesn't code to understand uh, because it uses a lot of layman terms. So for example, um, what triggered this workflow? Basically, when button register user is clicked, that is what triggers the workflow. So here we have when the button register user is clicked, what happens? Well, we start to add, what do we need? So first of all, we need to create a new thing, which is a create a new, create a new thing essentially means creating a new data record, okay? So I can create a new thing. I can create a user profile and the user profile has a few things. It has uh, email, emails equal. And remember I have input email equals input emails value. What this means is that when it saves the data record, it will take this input's value, input emails, the value that's inputted here and save it as part of the email record, or the email uh, attribute of the record, okay? Um, there's also, L oh, now before I even do that, I should do a sign the user up, okay? And sign the user up. Now, you know what? I'll just do that. Now. I'll just keep on creating this just for the sake of consistency. Okay. So first name, you have the input first name value. Middle name equals input middle names value and so forth. Last name equals input last names value. Okay, and then user type, you also have drop down user type value. Okay, now there's also one thing that's within the data table, within the data table of uh, the record of user profile, which is full name. Okay, now full name, you'll notice that in our form, we didn't put in the full name because we really don't need that. We can actually have, we already have the first, middle, and last name. So to create the full name, what we only need to do is to say the full name should be input first name's value. Sorry, value. And after that, it'll also have other operators that you can use, right? So there are very th various operators that can actually help you manipulate the data further. So there's things like, um, capitalized word, turn all of the value into a capitalized word, turn all of them into an uppercase. You can format it as uh, certain things. You can um, 
uh, append, you can you know truncate to, defaulting to. There are various different options that you can uh, you can have to manipulate the input value. For us here, what we like to do is we like to append a space. So I just press a live space here, and then space. And then I would insert another dynamic data. This time I will input middle name, value, append another space in between. And then again, insert dynamic value, input last name, value. So what this will do is when I save this, what this will do is the full name will be the first name, middle name and last name all combined together. So I really don't need to create another record uh, for this. So this will create a new user profile. I will also need to sign the user up and using the email. Now the email is um, inputs emails value, okay? Now password, I can actually create a temporary password for, um, uh, uh, now I could, now in the form here, I don't have a password section. What I like to do is I would like to create a temporary password for this user. So what I can actually do is I can actually set something called a arbitrary text, or I can use, um, let's see, current view, do a search, get an option arbitrary text and let's see if I can use something like a or maybe an option Let's do an arbitrary text. Let's just say, okay, it doesn't seem to give me that option here. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna one, two, three, four, five, all right. Uh, there, is, there is an option generator. Uh, there is a random text generator that is being allowed um, typically. So we'll I'll have to see how that's, you know, how that's worked now. Um, you may want to require password confirmation, or you may want to send an email to confirm the email. Uh, uh, send an email to confirm email address. There are very, there are various different ways that you can do this. Um, there's actually another way to set a temporary password. Uh, that is to, I can actually go here, and what I would also do is sign the user up. Uh, here text, send a confirmation email. Okay. And then, this, so what this will do is this will sign the user up. What then I can do is once I've signed the user up, I can actually change things. So I can actually make a change to thing. And what I would do is make a change to the current user. Temporary password, sorry. Just read the expression, current user, uh, temporary password and Interesting. I think they've recently changed the. I think they may have changed the editor because it's uh, they constantly change editor. But they used to have a random text generator. Oh, calculate formula. That's the one. Yeah, generate random string. Okay, the length of character. Okay, so yeah, they they moved it all the way down. So. In that case, uh, I can do is uh, actually 
here. Sorry, let me just do this. Password and let's see if I can use calculate formula type, generate random string, length of character. I can say that's one five random string. Do I want to use letter? Do I want to use numbers? That's up to us. So I can, let's say I want to use letters and numbers. Close. So the password will be a random string. All right. And then what I would do is I will also make it so that, uh, no, I would make it so that when the user first log in, it'll have when the user first log in, it'll actually have to change the password. So that's a temporary password. So I've set up green, green, green. Okay, you know what? Let's go with that for now. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move now one thing that you can actually do on the editor is you can actually move things around. So right now when when user register when button register user is clicked, um, step one is to create this user profile. Step two is to sign the user up. But it shouldn't be that. It should be the other way around. So what I will actually do is I can actually just change it to this side and have these uh, to switch. So step one is to sign the user up. Step two is to create the user profile. All right. Um, now let's try that and see what happens. And what I'm going to do is let me just reset that. And I'm going to add another element that shows that the user has been registered. So very quickly, the user has been registered. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go repeating. Here's a, actually, you know what? I don't need to do that. I'll just do this. So I'm going to go ahead. Reload the page. OK. So let's start registering. Test, first name. Test, middle name. Test, last name. And test at test.com. And the user type is, let's say, here's a normal user. And I'm going to and click on this. Click. Now, the user should have been created. Where do we see that? Well, we go back to the app, go to the data aspect, go to app data. And you can see that on the user side, I've now created a user. The email hasn't been confirmed yet. It was created on this date and modified on this date. But I also have the user profile created. So test at test.com, test first name, test last name, test middle name, and the full name is test first and, and is the three name combined, right? And the normal user, all right? So I've now created a new user on the platform. So this is base. so right now, this is a very quick and easy way of doing it. There are many ways that you can actually have this. So like I said, you can have email confirmation done. You can have a temporary password fix. Um, so that when they first log in, you can actually have different, uh, uh, you can actually have them demand that they change their password. There are various different things that you can do. So right now, this is just a very quick way to create a user registration using um, the workflow. There are many things that you can do on the workflow side of things. So that's on, um, that's how, so, so this is a very quick way of, you know, getting it done. The other things that, so as more things that we need to, as there are more things that we need to do, we can so create more data type. So if I go to, for example, the prospect aspect, so we can create the whole entire prospect data table, link it with the client profile data table and link it with various different things. So I think our time is almost up. I'm so, uh, you know, but uh, the next course we'll start setting this up. I'll have a lot of these pre-configured ne next time because I think we'll uh, focus a lot more on, uh, we've talked about data table attribute, setting up the data tables. We talked about page, group and element, input display. We've talked a little bit about logic and argument. 
We haven't talked about conditional or custom state. We have talked a little bit about workflow, but again, a lot of things that you'll be seeing as I've built this things out, uh, built this application out. So the next course, um, the next hour, you'll see a lot more that's uh, pre-done, but I will leave a few things to, 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 to create for you. So you can see a little bit more of what's uh, what this can uh, what this no code can do. Um, okay, so with that, let me first maybe open up. You know, I'm not sure if we're allowed to open up questions, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the webinar chat ch uh, chat and uh, yeah, and, and see if I can answer them. Pretty straightforward, I guess, so far. Okay. All right, so if it's pretty straightforward, um, again, if any of you want to reach out to me, um, you know, to have specific questions, feel free to ping me on my, uh, ping me on LinkedIn or send me a message or reach out to, uh, uh, reach out to uh, Justin at the FinTech Association if there's any question for me and uh yeah so hopefully i'll see all of you guys back on the next course when i will start to advance a little bit more on the crm and build a little bit more um functions including like creating a prospect um convert using workflow to convert a prospect into a client um adding a database to uh, you know adding products and uh and, and stuff like that so all right so I guess that's it. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll hopefully I'll see you guys in the next session again.